you carry on your shoulders the hopes, the aspiration, the knowledge, the history of the Anglican Church. All of it has culminated in you today sitting in this room as the first matriculants of the university on the Niger. And that is a great responsibility you carry. One of the reasons I like our national anthem is the promise of that national anthem. And one of the promises of that national anthem is to hand over a banner without stain to our next generation. So today, I want you to fly the banner of University on the Niger and to hand it over without a stain. That is your call today. That is your mission today. As we deal with the issue that in the 21st century, education has changed. The model of education we used to have, the classroom factory production of education. You come to school by 7 a.m., you go, you do lesson one, lesson two, you go for break, you come back, was because the industrial age of the 19th century was suited for an education that was made to fit that industrial age. But today, the world has changed. That model of education is outmoded. Today, we are in a world where people are communicating across thousands of miles without physically meeting each other. We are in a world today where the education you are going to get today is education that will make you globally competitive. As I was entering the hall, I saw the sign of the university talking about learning Chinese language. I heard the VC talking about the French language because the education barriers are no more within Nigeria. It's no more in our nature. The second heritage you carry is that you are in the city of our nature. This is the largest trading center in West Africa. This was the city of Igbo elites. If you think of Barista Anna, you think of Ika Azor, you think of Ekenet Lichuku, they all lived in Onicha at some point. This Onicha you see today was not the Onicha. That was the place of Onicha market literature. Onicha democratized access to literature. When you hear Sipre Nekwesi talk about Jagunana, when you hear Chinua Achebe even writing things for La Pat and Arrow of God, it is because they all pass through a culture of knowledge and literature that Onita represents. The Onita you see today that has all these high-rise buildings without public sewer, without water, was not the Onita that was built. So today, you carry the heritage of the Anglican Church, of the Diocese on the Niger, and you carry the double literature, the, do, the double heritage of our nature, the biggest commercial nerve center of Nigeria and West Africa, and the home of literature that has produced within this area. If you go 50 kilometers radius of this area, you find Chukwe Mekike, you find Chinua Achebe, you find Dr. Namdi Azikiwe, you find um, Chukwe Mekodume Gojuku, you find businessmen like Koscharis, you find Innocent, the only man producing vehicles today in Nigeria. They all drink and kept from this fountain of commerce, this fountain of knowledge called on nature. So do not look at yourself as just being in the university on the Niger. Look at yourself as carrying the banner of a proud heritage, of a proud history that makes you to hand over that banner without stain. Now, if you want to hand over that banner without stain, we must move away from competition to collaboration. That is where the world is today. The world today is that COVID came upon this world as a pandemic. In the history of mankind, all the pandemics that have hit us did not just destroy us. It killed for years the, the bourbon um, plague, the black death. It killed for years. But for the first time in human life, we had a pandemic. And within months, collaborating between labs across the world, using the internet, 
we were able to sequence what the COVID virus was, and we were able to find an RNA vaccine against the COVID virus. This is unprecedented. The human, net, human beings have never collaborated like this. Human beings have never come together in and solve the problem that threatened our common humanity. And that is the power of the education you are about to get. The education you are about to get will open you up to collaboration. It will open you up to the ability to work with others around the world in solving today's problems and possibly in envisaging tomorrow's problems. So while you are in the University of the Niger in Onitsha, while you carry these two heritages with you, you also carry the burden of the human life, of the progress of humanity, and the possibility that from your little enclave in the world, you are going to help us solve mankind's problems. So you are not today just students of University on the Niger. What we lack today in Nigeria is global competitiveness. I look at your generation and I call you a generation of victims. You are the victims of our planlessness. You are the victims of the failure of government in Nigeria. You are the victims of the failure of our leaders to think about our future. That is why most of you in this room may have gone to private primary schools and private secondary schools. Our public education system has collapsed because our leaders have turned it into a cesspool of corruption. But the good news is that despite these challenges, Nigeria is churning out young people who are facing the challenges of tomorrow. And I want to tell you that Nigeria has not always been like this. A friend of mine, Hakim Belo Sage, just told me last week that when he was in the university, Oxford University in the UK, Every summer, he left the UK and came to Nigeria. He will go and see his parents in Benin. Then he will go and see his friends in University of Lagos. While in University of Lagos, he will stay in the hostel with his friends in University of Lagos. Then he will take a bus to Ibadan and stay with his friends in University of Ibadan. He will eat and bath in the hostel. Then he will go by bus to Amadubelo University in Zaria and stay with his friends in Zaria before going back to Lagos and going back to Oxford. That his hostel in Oxford was no different from the hostel in the University of Ibadan. That what was happening in Oxford University was the same kind of people he found in University of Lagos. This Nigeria where people can no longer live in school hostels used to be the place where people from Oxford, people from Ghana, came to teach in Nigeria because it was like going abroad to come to teach in Nigeria. When I was growing up in Enugu, we look forward to Sundays when my uncle, Venerable Zelu, will come and take us and take us to Enugu campus. The beautiful lawns in Enugu campus, the lecturer's quarters, it was like sightseeing. Then he would take us to the refectory and they would serve us rice with chicken and ice cream in University of Nigeria, Enugu campus. It didn't happen in London. It was happening in University of Nigeria. We ate rice with chicken and we took tea from the teapot connected in the university. We had ice cream served by the university um, refectory to students after eating. That happened in Nigeria. So this Nigeria you see today was not the Nigeria that was dreamt about. It wasn't the Nigeria where no tribes and tongues may differ in brotherhood we stand. That is not the Nigeria. But today you have an opportunity as matriculants to build that new Nigeria. To build that nation as our anthem now says, O oh God of creation, grant this our one request. Help us to build a nation where no man is oppressed. You are now today oppressed because our system does not have for merit. So when you are in school today, I ask you, focus on your academics. This university will build your character. But let me tell you, once you join that first class 
second class upper, that one percent of the world, then quota system will not apply to you. Then discrimination will not apply to you because people that need your skills will look for you. From university of Niger, of, from the university on the Niger, you will go on to Cambridge, you will go on to Harvard because they will award you scholarship knowing that you have the mental ability to withstand the education they are about to impart on you. So, I want to leave you with a couple of things that I believe you must imbibe. I want you to imbibe what I have come to call the Chidoka principles. Number one is the knives principle. Knowledge, vision, execution, and sustain. Where you are today, this school you have entered is to grant you knowledge. Check what you have today. Evaluate yourself. Go to your note board, to your board, and write down. I want to graduate with a first class. And to achieve that first class, I must score A's in all my courses. And the least I can score is, an, is a B. It may not be attainable, but it will be the vision driving you. When you have that knowledge, then you must have a shared vision with this institution. You must find out what your lecturers want of you. You must find out what is the goal of this year education. Once you have that shared vision, then you must begin to execute it relentlessly. To execute means that you will not be late to lecture. To execute means that you will not join those who after school will go out to watch movies, but that you will spend time to do your homework, to review the work for tomorrow, and to make sure that you submit your assignments on time. When I was doing my youth service, I asked them, what shall I do to win the NYC award? They say you must have a perfect attendance to your community development. You must have your own community development. So for one year, I was in NYSE. I did not travel out of Abuja. I did not miss a CD, a community development work. And my personal community development distinguished me with the campaign for exam ethics and made me to win the NYSE award. So where you are going will determine the work you do. If you are destined to go to the top of your class, then you should plan on how to get to the top of your class. And when you get there, you must have the character to sustain it. You must have the ability that after first year, you cannot drop the ball in second year. You cannot drop the ball in third year. You cannot wait for the final year because everything is now 25-25% and it will determine what you will graduate with. When I went to read law as an old man, I said to myself, the minimum I have to leave this school will be a 2-1. So I did it, and I graduated with a 2-1 from Bayes University, despite all the distractions. So I urge you to please take what you have come to do here seriously. The gaps in our education is so huge because you are victims of poor governance. But the opportunities are so immense because you come from a place we are the human population. The human being is our greatest asset. Our asset is not in our oil. It's not in our buildings. It is in our human beings. So I urge you that you must also imbibe the principle of measure, monitor, and improve. I call it the M squared I. You must constantly measure yourself. Every result is a relative ranking. Look for what your neighbors are doing and make sure that they have not overtaken you. There is no result on itself that stands on its own. It is relative to other people in your class. So make sure that you constantly measure. Make sure you always measure. At the end of every semester, calculate your GPA and see whether you are where you want to be or whether you need to make improvements to get to where you want to be. If you measure, you must monitor constantly. And all this will lead you to improvement, to improve your score, to improve your ability. Now, I will be ending by bringing this up to what has famously become a, a philosophical foundation I had built for young people. Most of you here are Igbo, so you will understand me that the most important attribute we bring to the world is Uche, the concept of knowledge, of wisdom of discretion. 
If you do riots and destroy your school equipment, you are destroying your future, not the school. If you indulge in taking drugs or in doing anything that is untoward, you are only destroying yourself, not the school. So you must apply Uche in everything you do. You must apply that ability to discern, to listen to that inner voice in you, to look at what, is, what makes you Igbo, what makes you Nigerian, and what makes you a human being. If you have Uche, and you do not apply hard work, Uchu, Uchu will not take you anywhere. You must combine Uche with Uchu. When you combine Uche with Uchu, then you are harnessing the opportunities of the 21st century. That opportunity of the 21st century makes it possible for you to harness Uche na Uchu. But if you have Uche and Tinya Uchu, then you are a danger to the society. So I urge you to embrace Uche, Uchu, Neuguchuku. At the foundation of our society is morality. What has failed Nigeria? is the immoral nature of our transactional politics, our transactional governance model. So you must combine Uche, Uchu, Neuguchuku. And when you combine it, then you are a potent force to unlock the opportunities of the 21st century. There are changing times, but there are also unchanging principles. So if you live in changing times, but absorb the unchanging principles of hard work, of wisdom, and of fear of God, I can assure you that your future is bright. The opportunities are immense. So, as you stand in the pedestal of the University of the Niger, as you stand as the first matriculants of this university, as you stand as the inheritors of a glorious heritage, of both the university, of both the diocese on the Niger, of the city of Onitsha, of Anambra State, the home of indomitable people. Just remember that you need to hand over this banner without any stain on it. Just remember that the foundations you lay today is the tradition that future generations of students will say, this is how we behave in this school. How we behave is important. What we do is important. And I urge you all to ensure that you set that tradition, that capacity that promotes collaboration, that promotes creativity, that promotes knowledge sharing, that makes it possible for you to become the icons of the 21st century. And do not forget, and this is very important, do not forget that the investment in education is an investment in the future. And that you, standing here today, sitting in this hall, in the presence of Obi of Onitsha, of my Lord Bishop, has been handed over this banner. This investment is about to be made on you, and we hope that in 50 years' time, at the 50th anniversary of this university, many of you will be sitting on the podium or standing on this stage and telling the students the future belongs to you. Thank you very much.